Welcome to the Tuesday, September 26, 2023, regular closed session meeting of the EdMed Board of Directors. Director Patterson is absent and excused. Roll call, Madam Secretary. Director Chan. Present. Director Coleman. Present. Director Lenny. Here. Director McIntosh. Here. Director Young. Here. President Katz. Here. If members of the public are online and wish to make public comment, please use the raise your hand feature in Zoom. Comments on non-agenda items will be heard at the beginning of the meeting. Comments on agenda items will be heard when the item is up for consideration. Madam Secretary, are there any hands for public comment? There are no hands online for public comment. You have two cards at your place. I see uh, one card from Eric Larson, followed by Yvette Rivera. Three minutes start now, Eric. Thank you, Richard. Good morning, President Katz, board members, and general manager Chan. Today, Oakland City businesses are shuttering their doors in protest to rising crime and apparent inaction by Oakland City leaders to address unabated street crime. From property crime, car thefts, and sideshows to shootings, muggings, and public citizens being struck and killed by drivers of stolen vehicles. It's dangerous out there in the streets right now. It's crazy in the streets right now. I've seen them at seven o'clock in the evening come careening around the corners, nearly striking a cyclist. A woman was robbed at gunpoint at nine o'clock in the morning outside of my girlfriend's house on Webster Street. And increasingly, I'm hearing a louder concern from my members, plumbers, truck drivers, meter readers, and water distribution crew foremen with real concerns about their safety. We've been told, keep your head on a swivel. Well, you can't keep your head on a swivel and pay attention to a pipe and a truck and a tractor and the ditch. We've been told, call SOCC and they can send a security guard to do a drive-by. We don't need more drive-bys. We need real solutions. We need long-term solutions and near-term solutions. We need increased security staffing at the district that can be present on job sites and at yards. And we need availability of the Oakland Police Department, California Highway Patrol, or the Sheriff's Department where necessary. We also need long-term solutions. We need you, the Board of Directors, and the General Manager to be engaged with policymakers to create systemic changes in the City of Oakland that includes educational and occupational opportunities for local at-risk youth in our city hiring local and providing stable long-term employment and being a rock of our community as part of East Bay Mud's legacy. And the safety and security should be of great concern to the district, both at the community level and the level of our employees who are in the street day and night, keeping the water flowing in our community. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this with us. Uh, Director Coleman. I have a question or comment. I, can this, I mean, what Eric has raised is real. Yeah. We read about it periodically within our own mem uh, notes. And clearly we're reading about it here in the city, in the cities, not this city, but the cities on crime. Can we have a presentation on what might be able to be done or to help on the safety of our employees who are out in the public to maybe to, I guess, ledge HR? Um, yeah, I can provide an update and maybe give me a little time because I'm actually engaging with some other groups on how to address this issue uh, beyond just East Bay Mud. Okay. Um, and some of those meetings are going to take a little time. We'll certainly include um, labor in that discussion. Um, so give me a little time before I bring it to the next meeting, but, but it is something that I am thinking about, about as well. Um, I just request that it be brought beyond Ledge HR. Sure. I'm fine with that if it goes to the entire board, Marguerite. Thank you for uh, engaging the uh, general manager on this, and thank you for the comment. Uh, Yvette Rivera. Thank you. I provided four documents to you this morning. One, uh, Director Chan, um, as you're unaware, I've been on this closed board agenda many times over the past 10 years because of my whistleblowing activities. Today, it's just another rodeo for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. I provided 
this board a copy of each tort complaint that you'll be discussing at the board meeting, at the closed board meeting this morning. Again, I do this just because it's about transparency at this point. I already know the board won't do anything. I provided a copy of data that I retrieved from Transparency California, and it's overtime pay for everyone that reports to below managers in my work group. I've reached out to the board members to address the retaliation and discrimination, and this data should give you a glimpse of what that ends up looking like in terms of money. On the card that I just gave the district secretary, I said I would be providing a, an update to the Pierce Bland lawsuit. This afternoon, I'm going to give this board a copy of their attorney's opposition to East Bay Mud's request for a new trial. Part of me would enjoy a new trial because I did miss some of it because I went on vacation. But um, I assume at a new trial, since the hearing was canceled this week by the judge, I'm assuming a new trial won't be given and that the district will have to go to the Ninth Circuit. I'll be giving you this document at the one o'clock meeting. I'm gonna end by talking about the document that I gave you about the, the woman and her children that were handcuffed in Castro Valley. Alameda County lost a decision, a jury decision, and was asked to pay $8 million to this black family that was detained while they were getting some, while they were trying to get some coffee in Castro Valley. I've given up on believing that any board members, really at any agency, will do anything, even though they have the power to do it. If you turn over to the back of this document, it really symbolizes what happens here at East Bay Mud. Obviously, it happens at other agencies. On the last paragraph, it says, according to Peters, the Alameda County Sheriff's Office did not discipline the officers involved. Both Holland and the other deputy named in the lawsuit were later promoted to captains. It's not an unusual thing for me anymore to read something like that. But East Bay Mud ups it by giving bonuses that look like $17,000, $10,000, $8,000, and $4,000. That's all I have. I yield. Um, Director Coleman? Yeah, thank you. Clifford, on the overtime thing, this is pretty amazing. It's really amazing. Like in the city of San Francisco, some people get over $200,000 in overtime. So can we get a discussion about this? I know it can't happen this week or the next week probably, but a breaking down of uh, overtime by departments, how much money it is, um, because that also may show that we have a deficiency in staff in some of those departments where it may be less expensive to actually have more staff than to have you know, the uh, excessive overtime. So I don't know if that would go to, the, I mean, ultimately it goes to the full board, but that's also a finance committee issue. We could provide some additional information on overtime in departments. And then the other thing, so Ms. Rivera, if she's still here, um, I've asked to have it put on the ledge HR committee next meeting on uh, what is our whistle whistleblower policy and how does that work? And uh, apparently there's a policy being developed and it'll be shown at the next ledge HR. Uh, okay, with that noted, uh, and seeing no further public comment, we will now convene to conference room eight to disclose- Those are my glasses. Oh, those are yours? Uh, to, disclose, <laughs> <laughs> to discuss closed session agenda need. items. Hey, and we I are scheduled to return for our regular meeting at 1.15 p.m. <laughs> Welcome to the Tuesday, September 26, 2023, regular business meeting of the EBMED Board of Directors. Finance Administration Committee, as well as reports from the September 25th DSRSD, EBMUD Recycled Water Authority, Durwa, under item 15.
Director Patterson is absent and excused. Roll call, Madam Secretary. Director Chan. Present. Director Coleman. Present. Director Lenny. Here. Director McIntosh. Here. Director Young. Here. President Katz. Here. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. There are no announcements from closed session. We move to public comment. If members of the public are online and wish to speak on agenda or non-agenda items, please use the raise your hand feature in Zoom. Comments on non-agenda items will be heard now. Comments on agenda items will be heard when the item is up for consideration. Madam Secretary, are there any public comments online? Give me one moment. There are no hands online for public comment. You have two cards, and I need to give some handouts to um, the members who were not in the Finance Administration Committee. Is that no. correct, Ms. No, everyone. These are for everybody? Okay. While, while the attachments uh, uh, for Ms. Rivera's comments are going out, I will call George Cleveland first. Thank you. Followed by Yvette Rivera. Uh, good afternoon, members of the board, General Manager Chan, everybody in the room. Um, you heard something earlier this morning at the, at the public comment in the closed meeting about this entity called Transparency in California and the data. I just want you to take that with a slight grain of salt because their parent company is based out of state and they are anti-labor, anti-union, anti-worker. So I'm just putting that out there. And I guess the other thing is, this is my last board meeting as an active employee, because I'm retiring. And I just want to say I'm glad I worked here, and I'm glad I was able to present to the board on various topics. And I hope that you didn't take anything I said personally. Um, but I'm glad to have worked here as long as I have. And I do have great respect for you as a body. And now I'm going to be retiring. I'm just going to be one of Director Young's constituents. So I just want to say thank you very much. And that's it. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. George, give your mom my love. <laughs> Thank you for coming. All right. Uh, all right, we have another speaker uh, card from Yvette Rivera. And we also have one hand online for public comment after Ms. Rivera. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, it's it's everything. Is the same as earlier? Everyone gets four documents, I believe, and everyone gets one each. Okay, but it's different than earlier, okay? Yes, these are different than earlier. Got it. All right, Ms. Rivera, you may begin. May I wait until members get in and have the online person speak first? We are, uh, I think we're getting this distributed, so I, I do not think we'll be able to read it in its entirety well, um, but, but we will, we, we're all receiving it. And now everybody has a copy, so please go ahead. Thank you, I just wanna make a comment about what George Cleveland just said. The data that I extracted was from myself and people that work for Ed Bettencourt. Data that I did look at on Transparency California showed that some employees, I think there was one employee that was, what I read was getting a salary of 192,000 and OT was close to 190. So that's a good report to ask for. I provided this board in this meeting four documents. Several of these documents are for April Chan's benefit because she hasn't been here in the years that I've been retaliated against since I first came to the board in December 2013 and 2014. One of the documents is, you know, I'm not a lawyer, so I filed federal civil rights lawsuits all by myself. One of them was a, a petition uh, for order allowing the filing of pleadings containing a cause of action against attorneys based on civil conspiracy with client. At that time, it was against Lourdes Matthews and Jelana Collins. So 
And as you can see, the tort complaints do list general counsel's office, the recent tort complaints. The next document is a verified petition of writ of mandamus for de declaratory relief that I filed against PERB. I got an attorney to help me with that one, and that was so that I exhausted with PERB. The next document is um, the Saji Pierce and Ario Bland uh, attorney's response to the district's attempt to get the trial uh, redone. Um, again, I mentioned this morning that it'll probably not be because the, the hearing, uh, upcoming hearing on Friday was canceled, but we'll see. The next document is the United States 9th District um, memorandum that I would, I want to say, ended my previous lawsuit. And I really hope that this board considers having your HR staff read it because in the back of the document, it talks about the, the judges, um, talk about how the retaliation portion of the case shouldn't have been thrown out, how the warning letter I received could be construed as retaliation. By the way, Clifford Chan, the general manager, the present general manager, was the director in charge of my group and let that happen. Um, the last thing I want to say is I gave you an article this morning about the women, the black family that were, that basically were put in handcuffs when they were sitting in front of a Starbucks in Castro Valley. And I told you how those police officers weren't punished. They weren't disciplined. They were promoted to captain. What I didn't say then was, this morning was, the message that Alameda County sent to all of the police officers on staff was, number one, you're not going to get punished if you can't tell the difference between a black man and a black woman or a, a black adult and a black child. And number two, you are going to get rewarded. And it's basically the same scenario here at Ishpa Mud. Not only will you get promoted, but you'll get a bonus. I yield. We have a speaker online, Madam Secretary. Yes, give me one moment. Lana Coleman, you should be able to unmute your mic. Uh, yes, can you hear me now? Yes, your three minutes start now. Thank you. Hopefully this will be short and very painless. I, I'm commenting, actually, it's item one, the approval of the minutes on the consent calendar. I want to, cor I want to correct. Uh, yes, um, can you hear me now? It says yes, that I now. spoke last time about the investigation, the scope of the investigation, my allegations, and the current court appeal. I want to have that I spoke about the court appeal removed. If you look at what I stated, I said, I'm here not to talk about the court appeal. Um, basically, I did not say anything really about the appeal. The reason this is important, I'm not trying to be picky. However, there are um, aspects of the law that, that say I shouldn't be talking about the case. John shouldn't be talking about the case, even as a private citizen, I think. So when, when I've spoken, I've been very careful, but the emphasis of my comments is on all the mistakes East Bay Mud made. It is not about the court case. There is an appeal that will be handled in the court. For example, Derek sent a letter to my attorney saying that I was appearing before the board speaking about the court case. It's not true. I'm speaking about what happened before and what's transpired after a decision was rendered. And I, I don't want somebody to be able to use these minutes later to say, look, she came and talked about the court case. So if in today's minutes, it can be properly reflected why I am asking for a, a correction and document that. Um, so it's part of the record. It, it would be very much appreciated. Um, I, I didn't. I did not speak about the court case. If you go back and and read what I wrote, I simply made reference to the fact there is one. And that's about it. Thank you very much for making the the change. Thank you, Mrs. Coleman. Uh, we will uh, receive that as comment on item number one. Uh, Director Lenny. Yeah, I just. I, uh, Lana Coleman reminded me of something. 
uh, I've been meaning to request. Uh, and this is just on the issue of reciprocity in general. Uh, I would admit that there might be some holes in my knowledge about uh, how reciprocity works and how it applies to uh, retirement pay. Uh, I wonder if I could request a presentation of some sort to the board uh, on this issue uh, and learn a little bit more. I think it might help all of us. Well, we can provide the update. Okay, thank you. And um, uh, thank you for your comment, Mrs. Coleman. Uh, as we move to the consent calendar, I will ask that we um, table item number one just while uh, the secretary uh, attempts to look at the transcript. We, you know, our practice has been to um, uh, verify when, when we've had a request for a correction. Our practice has been to uh, attempt to verify uh, the 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 issue. It, it, that, that is the potential discrepancy in the minutes, and then to make the correction if we can um, find that in the, 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 the transcript of the proceedings. Um, so we can, uh, it's not always feasible, but we can try to okay, see. Nice. Um, so while that's in progress, we, we can consider uh, the consent calendar. Uh, I understand that, the, uh, uh, that we will uh, not be considering item 10 on the consent calendar. Or, um, uh, just pull the item for now. I want to make a comment. Okay. All right. So we will um, just just consider as part of the consent calendar items two through nine. Are there any other items for? Why are we doing number ten? Because we spent a lot of time on it th today. Because what's in the board packet and what's at their places are different. So I just want to let see. the board know. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So item one will be addressed. It will be sent to the next board meeting? Uh, what, that, that sort of depends on how fast the, uh, the board uh, completes the business to, for today compared to the secretary's review of the, the transcript. Correct. Before we move to consent, we have one additional hand for public comment. Do we want to take that before we take the consent? Yes. Uh, let's take, uh, uh, if, if the comment is about items two through nine, um, uh, please go ahead or say what your comment is regarding. One moment. Kelly A., you should be able to unmute your mic. Thank you. Is this a uh, non, Ms. Kelly A? Is this non-agenda or an agenda item? Yeah, it's non-agenda because uh, it was on the finance committee earlier today, and they okay. had a nice presentation on uh, the cost of this Los Vaqueros Reservoir in Contra Costa County, um, and uh, this uh, district, East Bay Mud, is uh, participating heavily. It's a the total project cost is a very very big project, a billion and a half dollars. Um, and all these uh, local agencies are participating in this very expensive project uh, because they're under the impression that they need more storage uh, and that, uh, uh, you know, the local storage, you know, in the event, in the event of an earthquake or whatever. And, uh, you know, if that's the case, um, I'm wondering why aren't these agencies were and, and they're holding that up, by the way, the Los Vaqueros as a shining example of uh, regional cooperation. All these different water districts working together and investing to build this giant Los Vaqueros project. Um, I'm wondering why uh, the same kind of thing doesn't happen elsewhere in the Bay Area with giant new water project, water uh, storage reservoirs being planned. Um, especially, you know, in very critical areas, like right along the state aqueduct, the South Bay aqueduct, I'm, I'm not the state aqueduct, the South Bay aqueduct, um, in uh, southern uh, Alameda County and northern uh, Santa Clara County, a place that some of you may have heard of it. It's called the Calaveras Reservoir. And this Calaveras Dam and Reservoir has been there for 100 years, literally 100 years. I think I think this year marks its uh, 100th anniversary of the original dam there. And uh, they, they are, there are plans underway to add another roughly maybe almost uh, 300,000 acre feet there. Uh, and only one agency is participating in that one. And that thing is uh, 300,000 acre feet. That's a lot. That's a lot bigger. That could be the biggest project in the Bay Area on the drawing boards. And I'd... Uh, I'd be asking, uh, why don't we get more participants? Why not East Bay Mud, since East Bay Mud has uh, how many millions of customers? Uh, get out get out there and participate, because even if the water is not directly in your line of travel, you know, there are ways to um, 
trade off the water and get the water to get water to your customers. So it's a regional asset. East Bay Mud is a big part of the region. So is the you know so is the uh, Valley Water. So is uh, SFPUC. So is everybody uh, in the Bay Area. This should be another regional project. It should it should be uh, managed uh, a much more broadly, much more regionally, kind of like Los Vicaros is, and should not be the sole purview of one agency. Thanks. If I can just speak to that, not as a rebuttal, but Los Vicaros is a partnership, including the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission agencies down in uh, the Livermore area as well. I think Alameda County Water, in addition to Santa Clara Valley Water, and so it's a regional thing. The Calaveras Reservoir, I don't know where it is in the planning stages. I can tell you Los Vicaros in the planning, it's been planned for years to get to where it is today. And uh, who knows when Calaveras may get to that stage based on cost and environmental review. So I'm just, just for the record, noting that. All right. All right, we are, we have in front of us the consent calendar. Uh, is there a motion to approve items two through nine? I'll second. Moved by Director Young and then seconded by Director Linney. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, motion carries. Item number 10, General Manager. Yes, so at the uh, Finance Administration Committee uh, meeting today, uh, we um, they recommended and approved changes to policy 6.04 on the ethics policy and 7.11, um, and that's the use of district Bay Area facilities. Those revisions are at your places. I just want you to be aware of that before you vote on that because it's different than what's in your packet. We had ex extensive dialogue on those uh, two policies. Um, I can assure you, it was extensive, and it was it, the board the co uh, committee. Since Bill was not there, it was a two to zero vote to support the changes. Dan, I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll move item ten. Uh, do you want to say anything, um, April? No, I, I just want to thank Sophia and Barry for their quick work. Um, I really appreciate it. Feels good to get all of this done and set aside. Thank you. And I'll second. Okay, it's been moved by Director Coleman and seconded by Director Chan. I'd like to comment a little bit about uh, this um, final approval for the energy policy, uh, which had also gone through sustainability. And I think this is really a policy that, uh, that the Board of Directors and the whole district uh, uh, can and should be proud of, um, being uh, the, the earliest utility to set a uh, zero emission target for our water sector and now completing the loop with our wastewater sector. Uh, we are uh, on track to be a carbon neutral agency by 2030 and, uh, and has some important clarifications um, that make this a policy with integrity. So I'm very proud that we're taking action uh, in the face of climate change uh, to help uh, uh, take leadership to, be, to have a more sustainable future. Uh, thanks to uh, all the staff uh, that, that helped uh, contribute to this as well. Uh, any further comment about item 10? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain, the motion carries. Uh, we move to item 11. Did you wanna go back to item one? I don't know if- Are we I ready? I haven't looked. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. trying to get it right now. We can be patient. Uh, it's, thank you. Uh, item number 11. Mr. General Manager. Yes, so it's my pleasure to bring to you for consideration the appointment of Crystal Yesman as our Manager of Maintenance and Construction. The position oversees um, several very important groups, our pipeline maintenance and rebuild programs, our fleet operations, equipment support, meter reading and maintenance, as well as other maintenance support activities. Crystal has worked in the water industry for over 24 years and has a breadth of experience in operations, construction, maintenance, and design. For the last nine years, she was the engineering director for Marin Water. Crystal will be a fantastic addition to the East Bay Mud team. Yes. This one. I think so. We we have this item uh, recommending appointment of the manager of maintenance and construction for water operations. I'll move the item. Second. Moved by Director Linney, seconded by Vice President McIntosh. Aye. 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 
opposed? Abstain. The motion carries. And Crystal is here with us. So. And Crystal, I, I was a big believer when you did work a cow, Berkeley, go bears. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Are we on? Okay, yes. good. Thanks. Um, good afternoon, President Katz and directors. Uh, my name is Crystal Yesman, and it's a pleasure to be here today and mark what for me is a very significant day in what's been a long, fulfilling career in the water and wastewater utility sector. I'd like to thank you for your support and thank David and Clifford for highlighting my years of education and experience in the staff report. I plan on utilizing that knowledge to bring innovation and efficiencies to the district, but I also want you to know that it's my years of field experience, experience managing crises, making field decisions, that really gives me those pearls of knowledge that are most valuable. Lastly, I want to acknowledge that I am very well aware that it's the hard work of the men and women who work here that provide resilience to East Bay Mud and through their institutional knowledge and dedication to public service. The maintenance and construction department is a big group and I look forward to getting to know everyone and learning more about the intricacies of your infrastructure system and processes. Again, thank you for appointing me to the position, and I look forward to joining the team in October. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Next item is the proposed financing plan for fiscal year 2024. Yes, so as you're aware, each year um, the board considers our proposed financing plan. We did present this item to the Finance Administration Committee earlier today, and it was supported by the committee. We have Robbie Haney here, our Treasury Manager, um, with a brief presentation for your um, uh, uh, viewing or uh, consideration prior to, well, sorry, prior to consideration of this item. Okay, so uh, good afternoon, thank you. Um, each year we present the financing plan to the Finance and Administration Committee and then to the full board uh, for approval. And so I'm gonna briefly go over the fiscal year 2024 financing plan. And um, I already advanced the slide. The first slide here is an overview of the debt that we currently have outstanding uh, for the water system. We have 2.6 billion in debt. Most of that is fixed rate revenue bonds. 11% is variable rate commercial paper, and then we have a couple small state loans. And then on the wastewater system, we have 338 million of debt outstanding. All of that is fixed rate revenue bonds. And then our credit ratings are very high. Um, for the water system, they're AAA for S&P and Moody's. That's the highest rate you can get. Also, we're the only water utility rated AAA by Moody's in California. For the wastewater system, it's AAA by S&P as well, and then AA plus or the equivalent by Moody's and Fitch, so, so, both, so all very high ratings. This is what we did the last fiscal year in terms of debt. Um, we did not issue any new money revenue bonds. Our last uh, new money issue was at the end of fiscal year 2022. So given that that was in June, right before the fiscal year, we didn't need to issue any in 2023. In December, we did call early 14.3 million in bonds, which lowered our interest costs. And then we fully paid off our wastewater extendable commercial paper programs. And that had been out there a while. It had 8 million left and we paid it off. And then uh, at the end of, or in May, we paid off 14 million in water system commercial paper, something that we've been gradually doing over the years, paying off parts of that program. So here's the um, actual proposed plan for this fiscal year. We plan to issue new money bonds in March of 2024 to pay for capital projects, and we're currently targeting 275 million, so $275 million bond issue, which is the amount that was in our budget. Those we get closer and we look at our cash flow needs that could, could go up or down a little. Um, the underwriters selected for this are JP Morgan, Citigroup, and Seabird. They were selected from our underwriter pool, and um, that was part of a competitive process based on responses to a request for information. And then anytime we issue new money bonds, we look for chances to refinance some of the bonds we have outstanding. As I said, we have quite a few bonds out there outstanding, so we look for chances to refinance those for savings. And we think we're going to be able to refund about $213 million in outstanding bonds. And in today's, the market will change between now and March, but in today's market, it would get, that would give us a net present value savings of about $29 million with that refunding. And then on to a couple smaller pieces. We'll continue to pay down a portion of our commercial paper. We're, we're, we're planning for $10 million. 
And then at the end of the year, we've got two liquidity agreements um, associated with our commercial paper program that, that expire, and so we'll need to renew or replace those at the end of the year. So that's, that's everything on water. And then on wastewater, we also plan to issue new money bonds in March. We're targeting a $25 million bond issue, so a much smaller one, but obviously for the smaller of the two systems. And uh, like water, um, like on the water system, we will look for um, refunding opportunities, but we don't think there will be on, on this one. So there probably won't be a refunding. And Ramirez and company was selected as the underwriter for this bond issue. Okay. Um, <clears throat> oh, I, sh I should. A question came up at the administration committee, of uh, the finance and administration committee, about um, where interest rates are at or how they've changed over time. So I have a little bit more information on that, on that than I was able to give then. Of course, you've probably heard interest rates are up. There's certain reasons why they're much higher up on the on the on the early years of the curve. Like certainly, short-term rates are up a lot, and we're borrowing on, on out 30 years. So we're not. It's it's not quite as much as like you might see in money market funds. But um, to give just to give an example, in 2019. We, we issued bonds and we borrowed at 3.25%. If we were to issue today, which we can't, we're not doing it today, we're doing it in March, so interest rates could go up or down by then, but it would be around four point, a little over 4.1%. So since 2019, our interest rate for borrowing is up a little less than 1%. So in some ways, not as dramatic as maybe maybe I would have even, even thought, but um, I think it was talked about 2020. And we issued in 2019. We didn't issue in 2020. Interest rates went down even further in 2020. So it is it is a bigger gap between 2020 and today. Yeah. Um, okay. So green bonds. Um, this is this is we're about at the end. Um, the new money bonds are planned to be issued as green bonds. We're um, we're an agency that's considered uh, an expert in this space. We've done it quite a few times. This will be our fifth water green bond issue and our second wastewater green bond issue. And bonds, you know. You all know this, but bonds that are labeled green bonds are used to finance climate change resilient projects or other environmental, environ, environmentally beneficial projects. And we select the projects to finance with green bonds using our green bond guidance that was updated and adopted by the board in 2022. And I put in a snapshot, in case it's interesting, of what our bonds look like on Bloomberg. We get a little green leaf next to, next to our name. We're, of course, doing it for more reasons than that, but it's one of the things investors see when they're considering investing in our bonds. Robbie. Yes. Uh, quick question. Sorry. Quick question on the green bonds. I'm glad we're doing it. I remember when it was raised a number of years ago, there's hesitancy, maybe because it was so new at that mm -hmm. point in time. How many other municipalities that deal with water or wastewater are uh, getting green bonds? That That's a good question. I don't have the numbers. Okay. Um, I will say... Is it, is it a trend up? Yes, absolutely. It's good. It's getting bigger every year. Um, we first did we first did our green bond issue in 2015. We were one of the early ones. Now it's it's fairly, I mean it's less than half, but it's still it's fairly common and it's growing. Um, there's an organization called CDAC that's run by the state treasurer's office that did a webinar on green bonds last week, and we participated as we were considered kind of like a like I was saying we're like an expert agency in this, so like we gave our our perspective, and there was 179 attendees to this webinar, and you really wouldn't attend unless you probably worked for a government agency in California interested in this. That was more than just water systems, but um, it, the interest just keeps growing. And then and the investor interest is growing too. There's more and more um, bond funds that are targeting these kind of bonds, like they have a mandate to buy this. It, that's still small, but, um, but, but that's definitely growing too. So is California on the vanguard, the lead, where this is happening? With agencies, I think so. I bet if you ran the numbers, we're the biggest. But Vincent Park is we're the biggest state, and, we, and our state issues the most bonds. But um, the it's happening nationwide. Even but, in Florida. Uh, say what? Even in Florida? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you have me curious. Uh, I'll, I'll look. I'll, I'll look into that. Um, my guess is is that it's disproportionate. You know, in, in, California. Ca in California, even 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 compared to its size. Um, I, I just might recommend to have, um, I don't know, Sophia's in the room, I can't see, she's probably behind your head, hi, um, is, is whether we could have series come and do, um, give an over, maybe to the Finance Administration Committee yeah. on, um, you know, what the trends are with green bonds and who's buying them, who's issuing them, um, what the... Um, criteria and because um, in the early days there was a lot of concern about 
AstroTurf green bonds, green bonds that actually were being, that, you know, people issuing green bonds that actually really weren't. Um, and I know we did some, you know, early advocacy um, on that as did uh, Siri. So I think that might be a good sort of educational presentation for the yeah. Finance Administration. Can I, um, Director Young, do you think that would also extend to the retirement? Uh, no, think? because they're tax exempt bonds. Okay. And we don't invest in tax exempt bonds because we're not, in fact, because we're tax exempt ourselves. What about ESG in general? We have regular presentations on ESG in okay. general at the retirement board. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the market's really interesting. There are so corporate. There's corporate green bond issuers too. We we of course. When we're an issuer of bonds at the district, we're issuing in the municipal bond market, taxes and bond market. But on the retirement system side, we could be buyers of corporate corporate green bonds. You know, other which are more bonds. suspect as to whether they're in fact green or not. I think the first green bond issue. I appreciate that our green bonds are are uh, uh, most certainly not greenwashed green green <clears throat> bonds, but uh, it is a big risk out there, and and it's good that we're in the space so that we can set an example of a high quality green bond. At the same time, though, I think we it's been really hard, at least as of, uh, I haven't, you know, received this presentation, um, you know, since rotating off the Finance Committee, but when I had asked you about this previously, it didn't seem like there was really a very significant um, price benefit in the market. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we're already, we already benefit so much from being able to sell tax-exempt bonds as a municipal entity. Uh, and, and being such a um, highly uh, a reputed agency that has a, low, a very good credit rating, um, it's hard for us to tell, is the green label actually providing a big benefit? And uh, it, it, it's just very hard to tell. It is, it is hard to tell. There, there's a few things working against us to figure it out. We also, um, every bond is different. When we issue bonds, we're actually issuing 30 different bonds because we're issuing 30 different years. Every, it's very hard to get an apples to apples comparison. But one new thing I learned, so I, I sat on this, on this panel last week for CDAC, and um, you know, we, think of the, of a, we think of the classic buyer of it, it would be a, a fund that has to buy, that is a municipal bond, sustainability focused fund, an ESG focused fund. But increasingly, just in their own credit analysis, when they're buying bonds for any of their funds, and typically our, our bonds could be bought by a California municipal bond fund, they're weighing ESG considerations. And so it can kind of help us in the selection anyway, even if it's a very large PEMCO kind of fund that invests billions and billions and doesn't necessarily have this mandate, they're, they're bringing ESG considerations into their regular credit analysis. So it's like really hard to tease out, did you get one basis point? But it's certainly, it, it's certainly one more thing for them to look at and consider. And then we've gone a long way um, to really put a lot of information in what's called our official statement, our sort of our statement that we put out there, the book about us when we're borrowing, that has a lot of information about our approach to this, the projects that we're financing, and um, we're told we're told people like it. So, um, but it is it is hard to get that. Oh, you saved X amount of money by doing it. Question: So, is there any requirement by Calsters, Calpers, or any other state retirement entity when they're going out and buying bonds to try and buy green bonds? Are they required or not, or do they even look at it? Well, they, they're, they're, of course, very large versions of our small retirement system, yeah. so I can speak a little bit to retirement system in general. When they, when they, if they hire a fixed income manager with a mandate to focus on, uh -huh. like with an ESG focus, then, it, then it, it could be that. They wouldn't, like Director Young said, they wouldn't be buyers of our bonds because they don't pay taxes and all of our bonds sure. are tax exempt. But um, they, they can have, they've got some portion of their portfolio um, committed to fixed income and it could be within that a smaller portion, you know, is directly directly buying green bonds. Great. Thank you. OK. They, they both have very significant ESG yes. investment staffs that are probably five times the size of our entire investment staff just for their ESG-focused work. Yes. OK, well, that, that was it. So the, um, as, as I said earlier, this um, was presented to the Finance and Administration Committee and approved this morning. And so the next step is to seek the full board approval for the financing plan. Uh, we voted 2 to 0 to support it. I will make the recommendation to uh, support this proposal. I will second. Moved by Director Coleman, seconded by Director Chan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Opposed? Staying. The motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Robbie. Thank you. So for the next item, this is a resolution on Clean Air Day. Um, last week's poor air quality caused by the <coughs> smoke from wildfires in Northern California and Oregon is a reminder of the importance of air quality. Particularly air pollution of this kind is associated with, uh, associated with wildfire smoke can cause illnesses like bronchitis, increased asthma attacks, and has been linked to an increase in risk of heart attack, stroke, and lung cancer. And air pollution in general is associated with higher rates of cancer and heart and lung disease. However, individual and community actions can decrease air pollution. For a third year in a row, I'm pleased to recommend a resolution in support of California Clean Air Day. The resolution would declare October 4th, 2023 to be Clean Air Day at the district and would encourage employees to participate in the program. Clean, California Clean Air Day is a nonprofit statewide program built on the idea that shared experiences unite people to action to improve community health. Individuals are encouraged to commit to specific actions to reduce air pollution. The Employee Sustainability Committee is promoting this event at the district. So far, 30 employees have committed to take 294 actions to help clean the air. This is also an opportunity for us as an organization to reflect on our commitment to reducing air pollution. The district has adopted aggressive greenhouse gas reduction goals, purchased more efficient and cleaner vehicles, and expanded its renewable energy production. By working collectively, we can make a difference in air quality that benefits everyone's health. Um, so with that, I bring to you this resolution for your consideration. Second. Moved by Director Linney, seconded by Vice President McIntosh. I'd just like to say I'm glad that we do this uh, every year. Uh, it brings it back to our attention and gives us a chance to, to think about it. And I'm impressed that there's that many actions by individual employees who are taking pledges to do something about it. Here, here. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. The motion carries. Can, before we go on to the next thing, this is a great resolution. I know that I recently read... I think within the last week, there's a study done on sm maybe on smoke pollution from fires and how it impacts water quality. Um, can we do find a little bit of information about that? I guess as stuff settles into, from the air into the... No, it's bad for your lungs, but apparently has an impact in some regions on water quality. This may be play well into um, as we're looking at uh, future grants for UMRA and such forth if that's actually factual, to be able to help on wildfire reduction actions. Yeah, so at, at an upcoming uh, planning committee, we're going to discuss a semi-annual water quality um, update, and we can include uh, in a slide on that. Okay, thank you. Uh, in the, you know, if the Clean Air Day has been going on um, as a program of the Air District uh, well before we had frequent wildfires as the new normal. Um, but it does, you know, this timing, you know, having um, just just had uh, another wildfire event affecting our airshed, it does, you know, cause some reflection about worker safety. We had several days with, with the air AQI at about 150, uh, it, it, and you know, many of our employees uh, have to work outdoors. And um, you know, post post pandemic, we um, have a, a better understanding of the supply chain for high quality masks that have. Um, dual benefit. Um, so I, I am interested in, um, in a, not not you know, not something necessarily that it needs to create a, an, an urgent special memo. But I am interested at the appropriate time in in just some information about how are we supporting employees that have um, uh, the the right to uh, uh, assistance in, in terms of PPE and. Um, and other perhaps other accommodations, you know, during these these uh, uh, bad air, uh, you know, unhealthy air events, uh, just to understand how it's affecting the district. I could provide information for the board. Um, so we can go on to the general manager's report, but I do want to check and see if we're ready to go back to item number one. Can you please re review the email I just sent, and then yeah. So I, I do have I have uh, so moving to, to item number one. Um, I will accept the, the secretary. Mrs. Coleman has uh, sent to the secretary and myself um, an electronic copy of the comments that she made, and I have that in front of me. And I'll just read um, a relevant portion to the board, and the board can make its own determination about whether we should uh, address um, a change to the minutes as as requested by uh, the speaker. 
Um, so, okay, and actually, uh, Secretary has sent me an email that I um, mm. am receiving on a delayed basis. So, um, so um, the the um, I'll just read the actual text just so that we can have clarity about it. So there, there's a portion in the middle of um, Mrs. Coleman's comment that I believe she did read verbatim that said, there is a court appeal by me about me and whether I am entitled to retirement based on reciprocity because it was proposed twice by two retirement experts at EBMUD and I made irreversible financial decisions based on their original promises. I believe that's the only paragraph in her whole statement that addresses uh, the court case. But, uh, maybe, Madam Secretary, you, you may have seen another additional comment about the court case. There are a couple of more um, references to the court case in um, Lana Coleman's correction or response to comments from Director Patterson about the um, court case and then in comment to Director Lenny which is why the reference to the court appeal was included in the meeting minutes. And I would, if you look at my email, I would like to offer that the comments today from Lana mm -hmm. Coleman, that she was concerned about the court appeal being mentioned in the minutes will be included in today's minutes and that the board can consider the minutes from September 12th as written. Right, so, so those are those are in reference to the actual meeting in August, not the September 12th meeting. No, these are the September 12th meeting minutes. No, the questions, though, from Director Lenny and Patterson, those weren't, those weren't in the September 12th meeting. Those were right, and so in the August meeting. And Ms. Coleman was responding, so that was in the minute uh, uh, she was uh, responding. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, okay. so there's, there's been a, um, a, a concern <clears throat> that the original comments made on September 12th did not reference the uh, court action, the... Um, the, the, the minutes, the actual minutes you can see on page eight of your packet read, uh, Lana Coleman commented on the investigation into her claims, comma, the scope of the investigation, including all of the allegations she has made, comma, and the current court appeal about her portion of Director Coleman's EDMUD retirement benefits, semicolon. Um, so that, that the, the, the concern from um, Mrs. Coleman is that that summary in the minutes is inaccurate, and there's been a request to strike reference to um, that last clause, the current court appeal about um, et cetera. Um, so I, I um, uh, do find that the secretary was, um, you know, including it. Uh, it I can understand that it was uh, more of a a brief passing, and it wasn't the focus, but you know, it, it was recorded really as the last thing in summary of the comments. So the matter is before the board, do we, do we think the minutes are inaccurate or do we want to make a correction? Is there a, post, a proposed correction that threads the needle? Yeah. Um, we could, we could qualify words, this um, and, uh, and, and say and referencing uh, briefly referencing, we could say something like that, and that might make this more accurate. Uh, is that a recommendation? Uh, it, it's a suggestion. Uh, you're, are, are you the only one who got the email from Risha? I uh, am, yes, uh, that, that does appear to be the case. We can ask our staff for a recommendation. Uh, we can also... Uh, um, yeah. Can we put this over? and do a review? Yeah. So we all have the email? I, I think what Risha is probably recommending is, because her minutes are just a summary of what was discussed, mm -hmm. is approve the minutes as is, but in this, today's meeting minutes, note Lana Coleman's comments about um, the appeal so that between the last meeting minutes of what was the summary and capturing what she said today um, uh, clarifies. In the spirit of um, just receiving that, uh, that there wasn't an, you know, it, I, there wasn't an intent to talk about the court appeal in depth and reviewing her actual comments and finding that it wasn't discussed in depth, but it was mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, I, I will step forward and recommend that we um, r receive her comment today and then in adopting the minutes, um, just insert the words uh, in the context of the summary of what happened, not verbatim, um, 
uh, because we do have the actual comment provided as a public record received by, by the district. We have the actual comment if, if it's ever needed. The uh, comments were actually filed with the meeting minutes, so we have the the meeting the comments verbatim as mm -hmm. well. But but given that our, our practice is, uh, you, you know, if it if it was um, what was said, we do reflect it. Um, but we we it, this, it would be more accurate to insert the words and and briefly referenced mm -hmm. the current court appeal as, as opposed a, to commented on. Was that referenced in terms of responding to a question? Oh my God! It was yeah, it was please. her own statement. Okay. It, was her own, it was her own statement, and uh, you know she is requested uh, to uh, uh, change the context of, of her remarks. She's requested to el eliminate reference completely from the minutes. I don't feel like that is accurate, and the district secretary has, has communicated that that would not be accurate. Um, but I, I it can, says she commented on uh, several things. That was one of the things she commented on. Did she mention it, or did she comment on it, or did she make reference to it? I mean, come on, this is a little bit ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I do think it's uh, excessive to, uh, to 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 yes. deliberate about this. I, I move the minutes be approved. As Second. Is, as, as. Second. Um, Lord Jesus. Clarifying question. So, does the motion include Risha's cure? Proposed the motion cure. is as uh, is. There was no cure for well, me. She suggested. I, she, I, I she made suggest a proposal. Uh, but you did make, I, I, heard, I heard that well, you suggested that um, in this, in the uh, minutes for this meeting that we include what Ms. Coleman said, her concerns, and then you suggested that we, that the comment was briefly referred to. So I'm just saying. I think that was Clifford. No, that was me, I think. Yeah, I think, I think we, we will expect that, that the minutes proposed at our next meeting of today's minutes will reflect what um, Mrs. Coleman said during So the is that part of the motion? I don't motion. think the it needs to be. The motion is to approve the minutes, the minutes as they are printed. Mm -hmm. So just in an abundance of caution, I would advise you, Director Coleman, to recuse yourself from a vote on the minutes because the core issue is whether or not a comment was made that implicates a financial interest that you have. And so just in an abundance of caution, I would just advise not to, not to vote on the minutes. OK, there's a motion on the table. And a second. OK, all right. All those in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Opposed? Stay in the motion. Carries. All right, thank you. It needs to be noted. I yes. Okay. Uh, it's been, uh, yeah, the motion is approved uh, by a vote of uh, 5 to 0 to 1, with Director Coleman recused. Okay. And the last item is just at the Speaker Bureau. Um, an outreach record is at your places. And with that, I don't have any other items to report on. Thank you, Mr. General Manager. We now move to Director Comments. Uh, actually, before we do that, the minutes from September 12th Special Finance Administration, Planning, Ledge, HR committees are included in the agenda materials. We will now receive an update from this morning's Finance Administration Committee meeting and the September 25th DRSD uh, EDMUD Recycled Water Authority, the Derwin meeting. That is me in both cases. Okay, so Director Coleman. Today, I, in the Finance Committee. Okay. Much of the items that we discussed today and approved were actually dealt with this morning, and there was extensive conversation on district policies, as was alluded to, and we were able to reach an uh, acceptance of what. Uh, was needed to, to be done. Um, if you have any questions, literally most of them were on our late afternoon agenda. Um, the last night was Durwa, and that was actually one of the longer Durwa meetings. Um, we had uh, a number, we had minutes and tertiary reports for four months actually, approved the quarterly investments and authorized purchase replacement for uh, the sand fill uh, cascade rings, the other ones were uh, plastic, plastic and breaking down and getting into the process. So it's going to be a new ring. And we appointed a new Durwa treasurer. Yeah. And uh, we also had a proclamation for Richard Lou's service to Durwa since he now is retired from East Bay Mud. And he was the treasurer at Durwa for, I believe, 20 years. Uh, he was there, he accepted the award and the proclamation in addition to that. And with that, we had a great presentation on by, led by Brown and Caldwell 
on the whole issue of future water supplies, where they may come from, because there's a deficiency in, in peak periods currently, usually July through August, I think there's 12 days one year, 13 days another year, where there's not enough actual recycled water to meet the demand. So it dealt with storage, it dealt with transfers, it dealt with a whole array of things, and what to keep on the table, and uh, you know, it'll be reported back. Thank you, Director Coleman. Excuse me, President Katz. I have one hand um, online for public comment. I'll check and see what the public okay. Yeah, let's see about. what the comment is about. A. Chakala, you should be able to unmute your mic. Oh, hey, good afternoon. This is Gus Chakala. It was actually on item 13, um, the clean air resolution. So I think I missed the boat on that one. Uh, I, you know, we are uh, making good time today, so we would we would welcome your comment. Of course, that we, we did already take action on it, but we we would uh, welcome a brief comment. And it was unanimous. Okay, thank you. Leo. This is Gus Chikala, um, employee in uh, local 2019. I just wanted to make a comment. I, I appreciate the the gesture of the clear and air resolution. Um, I think it's it's good. It mentions a lot of actions employees in the district can take. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is. It fails to mention a powerful tool we have in our toolbox, which is telecommute. It mentions it kind of in passing, but um, on spare the air days of the district, we could really do a lot by allowing employees that do not need to come in that day to actually work from home. Um, I know mass transit is a great solution, but a lot of employees need to drive to mass transit or just simply don't have the option. Um, so I see the value in coming in, you know, regularly for in-person collaboration and whatnot, but some days I'm totally as productive or more productive from home. And uh, if that aligns with the spare of the air day, I think that more um, closely aligns with the district's sustainability initiatives. Um, so um, I don't think it's appropriate to tell everyone to stay home on spare of the air days or, or on October 4th, but I think it would be nice to encourage um, supervisors that if their employees are not needed on spare of the air days or on October 4th um, to, to recommend that um, if it works for them that day, that they can work from home and, and save the, the commute. So thank you. Thank you for the comment. And uh, let's go back to item 16, other items for future consideration. Please submit future items for consideration to the general manager. And thank you for have already submitted your written comments to the secretary. Are there any verbal director comments or reports? Okay, seeing none, the, re the next regular meeting of the board will be held on Tuesday, October 10th, 2023 at 1.15 p.m. This meeting is now adjourned.